I would ask all citizens who have the ability now to be out of town and get to a safer place that they would do it even now. Well, this afternoon, Mayor Barty issued a mandatory evacuation for the city of Port Arthur. That'll go into effect at 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. Now, to be clear, this is not a mandatory evacuation order for Jefferson County at this time. This is specific to the city of Port Arthur. And Mayor Barty isn't the only Southeast Texas leader making difficult decisions. Chambers, Hardin, Jasper, Tyler, and Jefferson counties, as well as the cities of Beaumont and Port Arthur, as you just heard, all filing disaster declarations. And as we continue to prepare for Laura, our team is working to bring you the most up to date information. Tonight we have live team coverage of the preparations underway. Here is the lineup for you. Our crews spread out around Southeast Texas. Lauren Hensley is with us talking about the message from the Texas Division of Emergency Management. Also Victoria De Leon checking in with energy, how their crews are preparing for power outages. We'll get to them in a moment, but I want to begin with Jordan James, who is keeping tabs on these evacuations. Jordan's with us live right now from Port Arthur. Yeah, Jordan, storm preps are underway in Port Arthur, and even with the warnings, some folks are choosing to ride the storm out. To leave or to stay, that's the question on lots of people's minds across Port Arthur. I'm kind of leaning toward riding it on out. It's going to be okay. Not gonna, nothing's going to happen. Everything's going to be good. God is taking care of these cities. Harvey Mills has dealt with his fair share of hurricanes over the years and is putting his trust in the city. I think we're in so much better position to deal with it now than we were when Harvey was here. <laughs> that give me more incentive to, to stay. Despite the optimism that Mills shares, the city of Port Arthur has issued a mandatory evacuation ahead of Tropical Storm Laura. I would hope that next Thursday, and I would publicly say this, that everybody would just be angry with me because they left and nothing happened. But the worst, worst scenario in this would be that we say nothing and do nothing. The order applies to all of Port Arthur, including Sabine Pass and Pleasure Island. With parts of the city not being protected by a levee, that increases the chances of widespread flooding, putting thousands of residents in harm's way. Despite the warnings, Daniel Dixon is staying put. Whatever they say, I, I, that doesn't bother me because uh, it's too much, too much traffic on the way. There's going to be more problem on the way than staying here. Just get everything you need to be ready. While many are trying to decide what to do, Barty says listen to the experts. The morning at 6 a.m., this information does not change, then we would want you to leave Port Arthur. The order can be changed at any time based on the latest track of the tropics. Again, again, um, Port Arthur City leaders are strongly advising folks to adhere to the warnings that they put out. Reporting here live in Jefferson County, Jordan James, 12 News. Appreciate that information, Jordan. Now, if you need sandbags, there are several locations around Southeast Texas to fill up. This is video from Port Arthur at the downtown pavilion on Proctor Street. There's also another location at the Bob Bauer Civic Center. You'll need to bring your own shovel and there is a five bag limit. For a full list of sandbag locations, it's really easy. Just text the word sand to 409-838-1212. And as you heard from Patrick earlier, the main threat with this fast moving Hurricane Laura will likely be the wind and certainly that is nothing to take lightly. It sure is not happening now. Intergy has crews moving into position ready to respond. 12 News reporter Victoria Dillion is monitoring that for us. Victoria. Yeah, Jordan and Dej, with weather like this, power outages are always a possibility, but energy crews are already making preparations to restore power as quickly and safety, safely as possible. Now, um, restorations may be, restoration times may be extended depending on the impact, but in the meantime, energy crews do have some safety tips for you to keep in mind. Now, first, remember that live wires can be deadly, so make sure to stay away from down power lines. That also means not trimming trees or removing debris from power lines. Energy company crews should be the ones to take care of that. You should also keep away from areas where crews are working and avoid using candles or other flammable objects to warm your home. And ahead of the storms, energy is mobilizing a storm 
long-term team of crews and contractors to help restore power as quickly as possible. They're also preparing to move equipment that sits in low-lying areas to higher ground should they need to. And if needed, high-water vehicles, marsh buggies, airboats, and drones are on standby to help with restoration efforts. And remember, this year they're also keeping COVID-19 um, safety measures in, in mind as well. We've been dealing with that since March in our day-to-day -day work, and we've had several trial runs of storms and thunderstorms to handle that, but it definitely affects our ability to put large numbers together, so we have to space out the crews in order to maintain the social distancing and COVID-19 protocols, but we're ready to do that as well. Now, that was the vice president of customer service for Entergy, Stuart Barrett. He says since they are not able to send large groups out into the field, it could possibly prolong restoration times, but doesn't think it'll be too much of an issue with the extra resources they have on standby. Now, if you do end up having to report an outage, that number to call is 1-800-ENTERGY. And remember, they have constant updates through social media, their website, and their app. Live in Beaumont, Victoria De Leon, 12 News. Thank you so much, Victoria. We're ready to respond. That is the message coming from the Texas Division of Emergency Management. Our 12 News investigator Lauren Hinsley spoke with Chief Nim Kidd this afternoon in a one-on-one -on -one interview. State and federal resources have been deployed to the Texas coast. They're in position. Ready to respond. That's the message coming from Chief Nim Kidd with the Texas Division of Emergency Management. We have buses and ambulances, boats and helicopters that are available for evacuation as well as search and rescue if we need. While he hopes rescues never have to happen, it's often the reality in a natural disaster, like this emotional video during Imelda. If you find yourself in this position this year, you're asked to wear a mask. We shouldn't overcomplicate this. So rescue during this situation just means wearing additional personal protective equipment. Shelters are going to look a lot different too. Kid says there will be fewer people staying in larger areas. And hotel rooms are also part of the state's plan. If you can pay out of pocket, Kid says you can pick your hotel. Otherwise, you're asked to respond to one of the state's reception hubs in San Antonio, Dallas, and Austin. The state will try to provide shelter or hotel options from there. The message is to be prepared and not panicked, to have a plan and follow that plan. Pay attention to the weather, pay attention to the meteorologist, and most importantly, pay attention to your local elected officials. Chainsaw crews and cleanup crews are mobilizing to Texas to help clean up in the aftermath of this storm. Lauren Hensley, 12 News.